Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm uh, yeah, Domenico Corapi. Uh, presentation is still not uh, showing. Yet. <laughs> cool. Uh, yes, I'm a software engineer at Babylon Health, uh, a London-based uh, startup. Has anyone here heard of Babylon Health before? Hands? Cool. Uh, so in this presentation, I want to tell you about uh, a piece of our infrastructure at Babylon Health, in particular, about how we store and connect clinical data using streams and graph. So we're going to talk about a bit about healthcare data modeling and the knowledge bases, connecting data about patient conditions semantically using a graph database, and then a bit about our own flavor of event sourcing uh, built on top of uh, Apache Kafka. We're not, going, we're not going to talk about many other things uh, in Babylon. In particular, we're not going to talk about the chatbot architecture, how we process natural language, and how we perform, perform uh, uh, symptom uh, triage. Um, it's, yeah, it's only a 20-minute presentation, so it's going to be a, a, an overview of um, uh, these things. So uh, instead of starting with um, architectural diagrams, let's follow the data. So if you go to uh, the Babylon Health website, the first thing you see is uh, this, this screen. And uh, this is our chatbot. So you can tell a chatbot about some uh, symptoms you're experiencing, and at the end of the chart, you're going to get an outcome that shows you possible causes, medical causes of your symptoms. Uh, so for example here, if you write, I've been uh, coughing a lot recently, what happens is we have a chatbot microservice and we take this uh, text and we send it to our dispatcher. Our dispatcher is basically a recurrence neural network that is trained to understand what the question is about. So we might uh, be asking, for example, to book a consultation, and that's a certain uh, type of flow. In this particular case, if you're saying, I've been coughing a lot recently, we are having a triage flow. Uh, the dispatcher sends the information back to the chatbot, and the chatbot starts talking to a triage service. Uh, the triage service has the logic that uh, deals with uh, producing a new question or, or giving you the final outcome. Uh, so the first thing that the triage service asks is, are we talking about cough? And uh, this is one of the interesting bits here. We have these entities in Babylon that are quite central to what we do. And there are symptoms, conditions, parts of the body. And we want, to, we want a way to identify them and connect them together. So for example, how is uh, uh, throat uh, semantically related to cough? Uh, or to discomfort or to pain. So in order to do that, we have a uh, Babylon knowledge base. And this is some of the links of cough inside the knowledge base. Uh, we, you have that cough is a subclass of functional finding of respiratory tract, which is in turn a subclass of uh, symptom. And you have uh, more specific cases of cough, like allergic cough, chronic cough, and so on. And this is quite a rich knowledge base. You have this uh, subclass hierarchy, but you also have things like uh, um, edges of the type finding site. So for example, we know that a cough is experienced in the respiratory tract. The knowledge base in Babylon has uh, around 8 million axioms, and it's basically a mix of different sources, as I'll show you in a bit. Uh, we have an explorer there, so that you can go to a particular concept and see uh, other information. And we, for example, we keep synonyms and uh, translations to other languages in our knowledge base as well. And this is basically our uh, shared language. We want our services to talk together, to talk about the same entities using this knowledge base. Uh, just briefly, some of the challenges involved in, in uh, maintaining a knowledge base. Well, one is about knowledge engineering. Uh, we want to improve this knowledge base, so we need tools, for example, to uh, parse uh, natural language text. So we can, we can go to sources like medical papers and ingest those. Uh, and uh, we want tools so that we can go to doctors and say, can you please review this? Can you add a new entity? Uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, there are obviously issues with uh, stability and versioning. So for example, imagine the chatbot has been using a certain ID for a while, then we decide to delete it at the point we need to uh, consider what we do with obsolete data. 
And uh, obviously, there are issues with the redundancy and completeness. So when you put multiple sources together, you might end up with uh, things like two nodes that mean exactly the same thing. And we have algorithms here that suggest possible corrections. So you see that the breast carcinoma and breast cancer point to the same things in the knowledge base. So these are easy to detect and to suggest as correction. Uh, if you continue with the flow, uh, and if you, if you say you have a cough, most likely you're going to be asked if you're a smoker. And this is just to show you how we deal with um, things that we call complex concept. So if you say you're an ex-smoker, we have an entity that says ex-smoker in the knowledge base, but also we can represent the, uh, um, the fact that this particular patient is not currently a smoker. So in this case, we would have a base concept of smoker and a set of modifiers. Modifiers themselves can be complex concepts, so this is a recursive definition, so this could be quite a um, rich way to describe these entities. And in this case, we know that the modifier for this uh, particular complex concept is uh, temporal context referring to recent. So here we are saying it's not the case that this uh, smoker, um, this patient has been a smoker recently. And uh, just to go a tiny little bit more into detail, we have a library to deal with these complex concepts that we expose to a, um, a web service. So for example, uh, we can compare these complex uh, concepts. Uh, for example, is chemical burn of an eye uh, eye injury? And you can see that this is more specific because it has an extra edge in it. Uh, but uh, what's the relationship between burn and injury? Again, if we go through the knowledge base, we realize that there is something here that you probably don't see really well called traumatic injury. And burn is a subclass of that, uh, which is in turn a subclass of injury. So transitively, uh, burn is a subclass of injury. And we can establish that uh, chemical burn of, an, uh, of eye is a subtype of eye injury. Um, if you finish, if you continue with this chat with the bot, eventually you get an outcome that uh, suggests that you should probably see a GP within one week and then offers some possible causes uh, for your symptom. So now, uh, what do we do with the uh, data? Uh, so this is quite some interesting piece of information. Uh, and what happens here is we use uh, event sourcing to handling um, our data. And I guess most of you are familiar with event sourcing. Who has seen this before? Cool. <laughs> um, so uh, just very briefly, uh, the um, idea here is instead of using the traditional way of doing things and saving the current state, so for example, the last symptoms a, a patient reported or the time a consultation um, occurred, we use events. So everything that happens in, in the system is a raw event. And in Babylon, we built this service called Event Store that is basically what implements our uh, event sourcing um, logic. So the definition here, and I'm quoting it, is all changes to an application state are stored as a sequence of events. And uh, yeah, this is really common. Basically, every company I worked for used some kind of event sourcing architecture. And the nice thing here is that it reduces the uh, dependencies, dependencies within the system because uh, the producer only has to know about the event store and the projections only have to know about the event store. And here we are separating the write path. The producer writes uh, raw events and it's not concerned about how these things are consumed. So we are able to consume these events and build projections based on our read path. Uh, the other good thing about event sourcing is that we are saving uh, a richer state than we would if we just mutated the state. So we have all these events that we can replay uh, from scratch. Um, this is how we build events in, uh, in Babylon. So we have a context part that includes things like a timestamp, a principle, and the name of the service that uh, originated the data. And uh, we have a payload that contains service-specific information, but ultimately uses also this uh, complex concept uh, I told you about before. And this is what the picture is like. We, we have uh, all these uh, uh, services that act as producers. They, they receive something from the user and they produce new events. 
And uh, so far we have two projections. Uh, one is called clinical history and one is called clinical graph. And one is built on top of a uh, Cassandra table, basically, and the other one is using a uh, Datastax enterprise graph. And right now we're also adding uh, change data capture. Uh, actually, the first time I heard about change data capture was here at uh, Berlin Buzzwords a few years ago. And the idea there is that instead of uh, getting producers to uh, explicitly create these events, uh, you have something that sits on top of the database, uh, usually it's a plugin, uh, that takes the change log and builds new events for us. And here we get to avoid this dependency. The service doesn't know about event store. And also we get to avoid that race condition that you get when you're writing something to your local storage and then you're sending the event to event store in this case. Um, And just a bit more, you can guess how this works uh, if you know Kafka. So you have a, a projection that inside there's a Kafka consumer. Kafka keeps, tracks, uh, keeps track of the offsets. Uh, so um, whenever clinical history wants to consume something, it says, this is my current offset, give me something new, and uh, then uh, changes the local, local state. Uh, we are using um, clients that uh, we uh, uh, give to the producers of uh, these events, and the events that we store are uh, typed using a protobuf schema to define uh, the content of these events. Uh, this is quite nice because, you know, uh, something quite common is you have, uh, let's say, our graph. We don't like the, graph, the model of the graph anymore. Uh, we want to update it. What we can do is we drop completely the graph or we drop completely the table and then we start consuming from event zero. Um, another nice thing here is uh, performing deletion. You have things like you can give it a deletion event and then the deletion event is consumed by the projections and then you can use um, Kafka key compaction to get rid of all the data in, in Kafka. And this is particularly good because uh, with healthcare data, uh, regulations are quite strict, so we need to be able to delete everything as soon as a um, user wants us to. Um, so what do we have in these uh, projections? Uh, this is what the uh, clinical history projection looks like. There are a few other columns, but here you can see there is a date and there is the concept being represented. But the more interesting one is uh, this one. And this is a, a screenshot from the Datastax uh, Enterprise Graph uh, Studio. Um, and this, all these things that you see in the screen come from a single interaction with the chatbot. Uh, so when you talk to the chatbot and you get to the end, you get uh, this kind of stuff. And just to give an idea of what's in there, there's two big uh, nodes in the middle. One represents a principal, and the other one represents a user. And the uh, other yellow nodes, those are keys, and they refer specifically to a particular concept. Uh, the blue ones are context, so they contain the timestamp, for example. And then this is the interesting bit. Uh, they point to these uh, heart-shaped uh, nodes in the knowledge base. And these are exactly our concept from our knowledge base. So our clinical graph contains a dump of our knowledge base, a subset of what I showed you before. Uh, so before we get to the next thing, so this is the full picture now. We have a knowledge base, which is our medical source of truth. We have event store, which is our event sourcing implementation, and a clinical graph, which puts together the events that we receive, the patients, and the conditions. Um, how do we use this? Uh, so for example, you know, we have a table there, we can perform queries and uh, get everything that happened to a certain patient within a certain uh, time interval. Uh, but think about this use case. You have a doctor, and uh, the doctor is talking to you. So after you finish your chat with the chatbot, the chatbot says, okay, you, can, you should talk to the doctor now. Uh, you can use Babylon to schedule a, a visit with the doctor. 
And when a doctor talks to you, then it can access some of your records. Uh, for, for example, it can say, uh, can you show me everything that happened to this patient that involves the respiratory tract? And we could iterate through these and um, apply filtering, but there is a nicer way to do this, which is to the, uh, to the user graph, to the clinical graph. And uh, the way you can, you can achieve that is you get the uh, respiratory tract in the knowledge base, and you go from that to the patient. So you're basically finding paths between that particular condition and the patient. So in this case, you can, you can go from here. Uh, from our knowledge base, you know that the finding site of cough is respiratory tract. And cough was one of those concepts that were created during our chat with the chatbot. So it's connected to a, a context node. And the context ultimately is uh, linked to the uh, patient. Uh, and this is quite powerful because uh, there was no direct link from respiratory tract. Uh, there, it wasn't generated during a consultation, but by putting two things together, we can, we can find this connection in the data. Um, and this is, uh, this is quite nice. Uh, we can use it to uh, connect patients together. For example, if someone is reporting pain generically and someone else is reporting abdominal pain, in this, uh, in this graph, we have a path between these two users. Um, last slide. Uh, just a bit about the challenges and uh, future directions here. Uh, so we already talked about the challenges with knowledge representation and uh, reasoning. Uh, uh, it's quite hard also to find the right tools uh, that allow us to be as uh, expressive as we'd like, uh, defining rules on top of the knowledge base and enforce integrity constraints. And uh, one of the future directions we're going to take here is to deal with um, uncertain information. Uh, I'd say the biggest challenge here is scaling up. Uh, we all have good experience with Kafka. We know it can deal with uh, big uh, throughput and uh, lots of data, but uh, we are not completely sure about mo our model on our uh, graph database. Uh, another challenge is integrating with other parts of the company. So usually it involves us going to other people, developing other service, saying, uh, can you please send us this piece of information? And by the way, can you use our clients and pack this into Protobuf? Uh, this is quite, it's not, uh, it's not super easy, and this is why we are trying to introduce uh, change data capture. And uh, uh, to conclude, uh, machine learning. So we can use machine learning to improve our tools. So we're working on, for example, producing graph embeddings that uh, relate uh, patients with each other and relate uh, concepts with each other. Um, but also, we want to use our data and the insights that we can gain from our knowledge base to do things like risk, uh, risk prediction on, uh, on the user. And that's all from me. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I think uh, you have mentioned that uh, you somehow make use of uh, scientific literature. Is it somehow automated? How does it work? Uh, there's no crawler that goes around and uh, reads these papers. But uh, yeah, there is, um, we have... Um, a library that you can use to ingest text, but we have to do it explicitly. We don't have a um, pipeline that ingests papers so far, yeah. <laughs> can you explain again how you go from the um, event store uh, and how you also populate the knowledge graph? Or Yeah. yeah. So, uh, there are two graphs here. There is the, the knowledge base and the clinical graph. The knowledge base is just multiple sources being integrated. So for example, we have SNOMED in it. Uh, um, and uh, the clinical graph instead is what in ingests things from the, the event store. So the clinical graph is, uh, is a microservice. It has a Kafka consumer, and uh, the consumer is subscribed to those uh, topics. So uh, it has a consumer ID, so for that consumer ID you have some offsets, and this, there's basically a loop there that goes there and says, give me, anything, uh, give me anything that has happened before the last time I consumed an event. 
And then the tricky bit there is uh, how do you go from an event to uh, nodes and edges? And that's the logic of the, the service, basically. And there is some specific logic that does that. Uh, yeah. OK, cool. a last question. Uh, I have a question about Kafka usage. So how many partitions, topics do you maintain? <laughs> Uh, how many partitions do we have? I think at the moment uh, it depends on the stream. Uh, in some cases we have... So uh, the topics that we have right now, they're probably like four or five. Uh, and those uh, map to specific sources. Uh, the partitions for each topic, I'm not quite sure. It's quite small. The amount of data that we process is, is not much. Uh, so it's probably like, I'd say four, but yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you.